What's up everyone? Today I'm back with my first build guide video. I'm guessing you guys saw in every single one of my videos I'm running around with this character. So now it's my time to explain why. So if you've ever wanted a character that can make tier 8 maps feel like tier 1, this is the character for you. This is the Gemma Auto Bomber Icy Ring character. So the basics of it is Path of Flames is a channeling skill and we are using cast while channeling to cast our Icy Ring. So what happens is you, ca you channel Path of Flames then and then this happens. And it's super tanky as well because of aura effect. So we're stacking aura effect, which gives us overcap on our res and erosion. We don't really care about that because most of the things that does erosion damage in this game, you can dodge. So that's like the only, only downside is a bit of lack of erosion resistance. So first off, let's go and let's do a map. Just so you guys can see what I'm talking about here. Let's do this. Let's do that. Let's check it out. Like, if you've ever, ever wanted a character that can make bosses feel like monsters, so then you have you don't have to have a mapper and a boss character. You can have both just in one character. So let me see here. Let's go. As you can see, you just run through them. It's not even, it's not even an issue. And this is tier 8, just keep in mind. So as you can see, like, <laughs> I've never had a character that just does this. You just run through them. And me, myself, I like two button builds, max, because when you have to, you know, keep track of everything, it just, it takes away the fun of, like, grinding maps. But yeah, as, like, this is the first build I can actually say in Torchlight I've enjoyed and not gotten bored of. As you can see, it's <laughs> like, T8 boss, he just disappears when you get to him. Let's do the mechanic quickly. So you guys can see, uh, let's just do this. I've done every single end game boss as well, including the uber bosses with this. And it's just a piece of cake. I mean, at the uber uber bosses, you will die like once or twice if you you know, fail to dodge something, you will. That's just how it is. But other than that, you have no problems at all. This was just what a normal map looks like. Juiced or not juiced, it doesn't matter. You get, still get the same effect. So, let's take it step by step and let's go through the talent tree first. First we pick up Goddess of Knowledge. Let me just go through the tree here slowly so you can see. And then for our points, we take beacon, extra spell damage. The cost we don't worry about because we have nodes that reduce uh, mana cost. So that's not even an issue. Burning touch, immune to frostbite, plus 20% additional cold and fire damage. Fire damage counts as cold damage as well because of our hero trait. So that's basically plus 40% additional damage, which is excellent. Next we pick up Spirit Caller and let me go through the tree again, slowly so you can see. There it is. Next up we pick up for our points, Translucent, plus 20% additional lightning damage. If you have dealt fire damage recently, which also counts as cold damage because of our hero trait again. And additional cold damage if you've dealt license recently. So this is basically plus 60 because of our hero trait, right? So excellent, great damage. 
particular vibe or peculiar vibe sorry plus 30 percent chance to inflict elemental ailment great we're talking about shock gear everything freeze i mean we're freezing anyways just because of our icy rings cold damage plus 25 percent additional damage enemies with elemental ailment excellent this is basically plus 75 no 50 sorry because we're not igniting so this is yeah plus 50 because we're shocking and we're freezing so plus 50 percent third we're taking warlock warlock tree has you know your aura nodes and you know energy shield just some great points go slowly through it here it also has blur on the feet which is great Blur is very underrated in my opinion. There we go. Next all the points we take Merciless. 15% of bonuses or reductions to attack speed. Also applied to cooldown recovery speed. This is insane for our build. Because we want that cooldown recovery speed for our icy ring costs. Also for our movement skill which helps a bit. Which we don't need actually because we have a lot of movement speed. But I'll come to that in a second. And recovery speed 15% of the effects on car speed is applied to cooldown of course. So this is just car speed to cooldown recovery. Excellent. Next off the beaten track plus 3 support skill levels. Support skill mana multiplier set to 105 which is great for our supports on our auras. And you will see. So there we are. That's the talent tree. If you want to see more, just mind it to pause the video and check out that. Here are traits. This is where it get, gets a bit interesting. So Gemma's hero traits is when dealing damage at fusion at max fusion energy, fire damage bonuses and additional bonuses are applied to cold damage. And when dealing damage at max Fusion energy, cold damage bonuses, and additional bonuses are applied to fire damage. So it stacks on each other. Excellent. And this is plus two max fusion energy. Remember, we want more max fusion energy for more damage. And fusion energy effect is also great because we're stacking more damage. At max fusion energy, always attempt to use. Frostfire Rampage automatically. This is great so you don't have to press the button. It just makes it automatic. And just more damage here. Which double dips. Excellent. All this is basically just damage and fusion energy. Um, as you can see here is when it converts your lightning damage as well. So we're just talking about all your damage you get is converted to cold damage. Which is what we want. And here my my uh, relics. 32% hero memory effect. Great. 30% max mana. Also great. Because we're stacking mana. Which I'll show you in a second. Plus 7 defense. Is for our energy shield. And movement speed. Movement speed is, feels so good on this build. For obvious reasons. For both of flames. And just. Just move through the enemies quickly that's also defense and movement speed and this is max fusion energy and movement speed if you have more flame elementium than me and you want a higher damage output you can go max fusion energy plus two and then increased mana but you'll have less movement speed so in my opinion we don't need more damage as you just saw we're fine on damage Okay, now for the pack. For the packs, I mean, you guys can use what you have. These aren't super expensive pets, I think. I mean, I'm free to play. And I got them. So, I think most of you would have some of these pets. Just at a lower level, perhaps. So, we're using two pets that give us increased quantity of flame fuel. And just flat increased quantity. I took... Minus 9 additional damage taken over the plus 13 additional damage. Because I don't think you need additional damage. More survivability is what we're looking for. So 
In this pack, we're using chance to deal double damage, additional spell damage, better damage here, and car speed. We could take the car speed one, but we don't need it. I'll show you why in a minute. So I just took the plus 20 damage. So yeah, other than that, there's no much more to say here. I took this because I needed elemental resistance. If you have more elemental resistance on your gear, you can just swap this out for more uh, quantity. Excellent. You can take a screenshot of this and copy it, or you can just uh, pause the video. Excellent. Next, for our equipment. So first, let's explain two side armor. What this does is adds 11%, 10% if you take the normal chest, non-corrupted. It adds 10 or 11% of missing mana as lightning damage. And what's interesting about this is a missing mana, which is sealed, counts as counts towards our chest. So this is all missing mana, even though it's sealed for our auras. So that's why we stack mana. So the more mana we, we seal, more lightning damage that gets added. Excellent. So next, what I want to explain is the Lone Walker's Boots. This is for aura effect. When you have eight or more auras, which we do. Excellent. Movement speed makes it insane. Because just look at our movement speed. Uh, 144. And we get more uh, while channeling Path of Flames. So we're pretty quick. It all adds up to basically 200% movement speed. Secondly, or thirdly, max mana on your helmet, 103 mana. You can, if you're on a budget, you can craft until intelligence. It only gets expensive to craft these items on the last craft. So same for the, the amulet, the last craft is the expensive one. Same for your ones, the last craft is the expensive one. So this is the ones, this is what they have. We're stacking int, we're stacking mana. For We're stacking int for this reason. For the damage per 12 intelligence. And we're stacking mana of course for our armor. Okay, and the infinity we're using is, we're using focus blessings so we want Max stacks plus one and focus strikes for icy ring to do more damage. And then I got just got some more ES on it. Nothing too major. You can pick this up for like 10, 15 flame elementium. Lone walker is the expensive one. You can pick it up for like 100, just below 100 usually. And these rings are cheap as well without, you know, good corruptions. So yeah, I think I showed everything and they're, they're not super expensive to craft. As I said, my budget in starting this build was like 200 FE. So if you have that, you'll be set to start. You can craft all your items for cheap without the aura effect and then the double damage. And the legendary gear is cheap to buy. As you can see, without the good corruption, of course. Let's see what it is without my. That's 45, not that expensive. So yeah, I hope you guys understand everything I said. Freedom. Let's just go to the skills quickly for the last part. First we have Path of Flames, Quick Mobility, Guard for more defense, Efficient Cost for less mana cost. Then we have Elemental Destruction with Abysmal Hatred and Talents of Terrain of Malice for that curse when you're doing bosses. I only use this when I'm doing bosses. When I'm like mapping, I use Soul Eating Circle with Mania, Soul Focus and Bloodbath. It just creates a circle and all enemies inside the circle take more damage. And then Mana Boil, I also use when just bossing. It, it takes from your mana, like it lowers your mana per second. But our mana recovery is so insane because of our chest. As you can see, it restores 10% of max mana per second at low mana. And we're always at low mana. 
so it doesn't affect us as much. So I just use mana boil on bosses and elemental destruction on bosses. When mapping, you can just use soul eating circle. You have enough damage. Now, this is just for icy ring, castle channeling, ring of ice, high voltage, lightning to cold. Because as you remember, we want to co convert as much elemental damage, fire and lightning to cold. And then the rest gets converted through our hero trait. Well, not converted, but added to the cold. And then control spell, freeze chance. So yeah, that's what you need for your ring of ice. For auras, you want precise. If you can get it, if you can't, you can just uh, lose like swiftness. Because some of the precise uh, skills has low, lower mana a higher mana cost if you're not using precise for your auras then we use selfishness as a support for the auras and then stand as one as well for the aura support which gives more aura effect so yeah swiftness for movement speed elemental resistance for max resistances and elemental resistances because we don't have that much on gear energy fortress for more es Frigid Domain for more spell damage and minus cold resistance for enemies. And lastly, Elemental Amplification. This is great because it boosts all of our elemental damage. And as you know, f fire and lightning gets added to the cold. So it's basically plus 90% if you want to look at it that way. Then Electric Conversion for additional lightning damage, which you, which you know gets added to cold erosion enhancement this is just for 15 percent additional damage to life this works great on bosses and then precise seal conversion this is expensive um, so i would recommend getting this later on and just dropping erosion enhancement if you're on a budget so dropping these two then and then selfishness again for aura effect so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this build guide if i missed anything or you want some more info on a certain topic of the build feel free to drop it in comments and i will definitely get back to you as this is my first build guide i hope i did well i'm trying to build it you know as i said in a previous vid i'm trying to build a small torchlight infinite community so I would appreciate any likes and, you know, subscriptions. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.